We both say today's daf is daf Zion. And we'll begin at the bottom of daf Vav on Pace. Two and a half lines up from the bottom. We also tefach hecha, hecha ma'amidu. We came to the conclusion that, according to the Chachamim Shita, a sukkah only requires two defanos, and the third is just a tefach. So imagine you have two defanos attached at a 90 degree angle. The one wants to know, where do you put that third tefach? Omar Rav, ma'amidu kenegid ayotza. And what that means is, as you'll see in the two diagrams of Rashi here on the bottom of the Tafav on the base, you add that little tefach either on the bottom or on the other side. It's attached to one of the two, the final, see the one. You have a choice. Amri le Rav Kahana, Rav Asi le Rav, that after hearing this statement of Rav called Mamido Kenegida Yotse, Rav Kahana and Rav Asi turned to Rav, and here we turn to Dav Zayin of Aleph, and they asked him the following question, I have a better idea. Why don't you sit up the third tefach, Keneged Rosh Tar? Now, Keneged Rosh Tar, that the literal translation has to do with the way you, you thresh your fields. And when you get to the end of the field, you extend it a little bit. But what it means in our context is the following. This is what the Gemara is suggesting, Keneged Rosh Tar. What you should do is you should put it diagonally across from the two defanos. What do you gain by that? If you can set up that third tefach in a way that it sort of moves a little bit towards the right and a little bit towards the left, then in a sense, what you've done is you've touched on the other two defanos that are missing. So the third dofan, which is only one tefach, and substitute, if you attach it to one of the two defanos, then you have a third dolphin, but if you attach it in a way that's diagonally across from the other two defanos, right? so then you could sort of swing it around a little bit here, a little bit there, as if you're touching on both defanos. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you the picture of it. Yeah. Okay. You know, every car has its own pictures. <laughs> But what the Gemara means is when it says Kenegi Rosh is that since it's diagonal to do this, so you can see that it's at that point, which is exactly diagonal, there's a little bit going towards the left and a little bit going towards the right. Mm -hmm. So it has the advantage, I'll read to you the Jewish, it says, Mira Ke'inu Meshamish Lushtei Defan. It's as if he's touching on two extra Defan. That was the, that was the advantage of uh, what's called now, Shosik Rav, Rav said nothing. And according to most of the what Rav meant to say, he rejected it. In other words, there's no need to require that you put it in that way. He didn't see much of an advantage. And therefore, you're free to put the tefach wherever you want and let it serve as a third dofa. I just want to mention in passing, I mentioned it yesterday, that the Balamar quotes one of the Mepharshim, that Rav was Shosek because he accepted the argument that was presented by these two Amoroyim, uh, Rav Kahan and Rav Asa. Is that what it means? Shosek? When it's silent? Maybe. Well, that's the question. What, what does Shosek mean? So some say that Shosek means, you know, I'm not even paying attention to your question. I'm not even going to answer it. Right. Others say that Shosek means, hey, you know, that's really good. Shtika Koda. It's an implicit uh, consent. Itmar Nami, we also have a, a tradition in the base Medrash of Rav, Amr Shmuel Bishmei Belevi, Mamido Kenegin Ayotze, he should set it up attaching that third tefach of a dolphin to one of the two other defanos, Bechain Morin Bey Midrash, and that was accepted as the final ruling in the base Medrash, what we call Halach Halamais, that that tefach of the third dolphin, Mamido Kenegida Yotse, and that is a support for Rav's opinion. Rav Simon, Itamer Rav Yeshua ben Levi Omar, here's another opinion about what to do with that third tefach as a third dolphin, in the name of Rav Simon and also Rav Yeshua ben Levi. 
Oselo tefach sochek. Now, what is tefach sochek? Sochek, I'm really stopping in the middle of a sentence here, but just to make sure that we know what a tefach sochek is, a normal tefach is the size of four etzbos. Now, take a look at my fingers. These are the four thinnest etzbos. The thumb is a little bit thicker than the other etzbos. And a tefach sochek is a little bit wider than a normal tefach because it's the tefach of the agudal, and you multiply it by four. So you're talking about four, thumb, four thumbs widths, and that's called the tefach sochek. So that these two amoroim want to be machmir, and they want to make that tefach a little bit more pronounced, if you will, a little bit more visible. Not only that, here's the punchline. It should be set up at a distance from one of the two defanos. You'll choose which one. At a distance of a little bit less than three tfachim, 2.9 tfachim. Why? You recall, we mentioned yesterday, that one of the halachas that were given at Moshe by Moshe and transmitted at Sinai was love. Love it means that anything less than three tfachim is considered sasu. It's as if it's completely filled in. So what's going to happen now is, according to Rav Simon and Rav Yeshua ben Levi, effectually, according to the halacha, you're going to have a third dolphin. What do I mean by third dolphin? A dolphin of a sukkah should be seven tfachim in width, we have Allah Moshe Sinai that says one tefach is enough. Now we're interpreting in such a way that one tefach really equals seven tefach. Now, how can you make seven tefach out of one tefach? That takes a lot of magical ability. But the answer is that if you structure that, that third dolphin, which is a tefach, at a distance of 2.9, which is almost three tefach, we're going to say it's kisosim, which means we're going to add three tefach together with one tefach, and you have four tfachim. Four tfachim, that's considered like rove. It's as if you have most of the seven tfachim that you want. So basically, what you're saying is that you've set up what's called a machita, which is a halachic entity, of four tfachim. And since the shear of a sukkah is seven tfachim, you have most, the majority of the shear of a tefah. Why is that? Oh. Because what he wants to do is he really wants to set up a sukkah that's surrounded by three mechitzos. And how do you get the third mechitzah if the Allah Moshe Bissinai says that it's only one tefach in width? So he figured it out that he can get a majority of the spear, and that would be considered like a dolphin by structuring it at a distance of love from the closer dolphin. You imagine the distance of the wall. Correct. That's called kisosim. Now that one wall is just standing by itself. It's not attached to the other. Right. Correct. Right. Once again, I can show you the pictures if you like, but maybe you have your own pictures. No, I have. I'm Rabbi Yehud. Suya Kemov. We have a concept very uh, prominent in Mesech that everyone called Mavui Mefulosh. Mavui Mefulosh means that as opposed to a Mavui Sasu, which is closed on the third side, a Mavui Mefulash is open because it's only surrounded by mechitzas on the right and the left. So it's basically two mechitzas that don't connect to each other. There's no 90 degree angle. And Rabbi Yehuda says that you can make a sukkah out of a mavu, which means out of two defados that are standing one against the other, they're not attached, shera, and you need a third dofu. You only have two defilements. So the third is going to be a tefach. But also tefach, he can attach that tefach to any section that he wants, meaning one of the two defilements. It's laissez-faire. Rav Simon, Vitem Rav Yeshua Malevni, which we had before, they were the machmirim in Sukkot. Vitem Rav Yeshua Malevni. No, no, no. It's not enough in a case of a sukkah, to set up a tefach of a third dolphin, but rather oselopas. 
Now, what's the difference between a pas and a tefah? The difference is that a pas has a rochav of our bot fachim umash. It's a little bit more <coughs> than four tefachim, and it's called a pas. What do we gain by saying that in a case of sukkah suyilamavu, we're going to require a pas of four tefachim? Mamido, listen to this. Again, we're going to use lovely. Bepachos mishlosha, samoch ledofen. We're going to set it up at a distance of 2.9 tfachim, close to one of the two defanos, in a 90 degree angle. And we're going to apply the principle of lovely. Kol pachos mishlosha, samoch ledofen, kol lovely dummy. And now we have it as if it's sasum. So now by being so same, You've got four tfachim of solid dofen, which is called what? A pas. And then you have another three tfachim of airspace, a little bit less than three tfachim, which is love food. So it's as if it's sasu. And now what you have is that you have now a dofen that's already considered seven tfachim, which is the shear of a small sukkah. And that's going to give you a third dofen that connects one dolphin to the other dolphin, as if you have three dofanos. So the chumra here of Rav Simon and Rav Yeshuv and Levi is based on the fact that if you have a sukkah kemavui, what connects the two dofanos? In the regular sukkah that we had before, which we called Kenegida uh, Yotze, there at least the two dofanos are touching each other. But in Mavui, the two Defanos are parallel, Mufulash in the middle. How do we connect them? So these are Moroyim, Rav Simon, Rav Yishim, they want to get a third Dolphin. So what they're going to do is they're going to set up a pass, which is what Tvachim, and allow for a three Tvachim space of Lovud to get seven Tvachim. And that's most of a Shir of the Sukkah. So in effect, he's got what would normally be a dolphin for a small sukkah, and that's going to connect the two defanos, one on the right and one on the left. The Gemara asks, on Rav Simon, what about the case that we discussed earlier, which is, you yourself said that it was enough that you had a tefach sochek, as a third dolphin, and you didn't extend it to make it into four tvachim as a pass. But here, in the case of Kimavu, you required setting up a pass of four tvachim to comrade, boy, pass our boy, why? Francis Hossam, in the case we have two defanos that connect to each other, those two defanos are full-fledged kosher of defanos because they touch each other and they are a structure of two defanos. That area of the sukkah is closed off. So at least you've closed off the sukkah to some extent. It's not wide open. And therefore, sagi lay betefach sukkah. Now you set up a tefach, which is a broader tefach. And that tefach since you put it within three tfachim close to the dolphin, that's enough. And now your sukkah is valid. But here in the case of Imavui, the leka shtei defanos, right? The idea of shtei defanos is to connect them in such a way that you block the, at least that area, you know, you, pro, you, know, you sort of uh, have a certain element of privacy. Therefore, we need a third dolphin to connect the, the two defanas because right now we have two defanas that aren't connected. Right. And therefore, e pas arba, once you require that the third dolphin be a pas arba in, then you could be masha the sukkah. And you add the pas arba together with the almost three tfachim of Lodwood and you get seven tfachim. And that's your connection between one dolphin and the other in the case of Kimov. But e if the dofen is not structured as seven tfachim, lo, the sukkah is not kosh. Now, if we were learning this be'irun, there's an entire piece of Torah here from the Sasemis, the Gerer Rebbe, and he writes 
that as far as Halacha Moshe Misina is concerned, all you need is a tefach, and that would be fine. All that we're learning now are the Rabbonin Hitzrichu Chetiroya Hasukah Kilu Yeshlo Sholosh Tefanos. These are all rabbinic requirements because the rabbis wanted the sukkah to look like it has three defanas. And unless you structure that box with four tefachim in a close proximity to the dofen, whether it's the one on the left or the right, you don't have what's called mirror here, tefanos, smuchos, zulu. Again, I'm just pointing out this is an owl's discussion in the Sfasem. Not for a Dafyo Mishir. Omar Rav. Now, we're about to learn a statement of Rava, which has three different traditions. There are three different versions of exactly what Rava said. The first version is the following. When we talk about a Dauphin, a third Dauphin, which is a Tefa, the third dolphin of a sukkah, if you only have two dofanos, then that hefa on the third as, as functioning or replacing, if we if you want a third dolphin, must be a tsuras hapesa. Tsuras hapesa means what's called konamikan, konamikan, the konal gaben. So you've got two vertical poles and you have one horizontal pole that sits on the other two vertical poles. And that's considered a machitza as far as Shabbos is concerned, as far as Erevin is concerned. And now Rava is requiring that we take that tefa, which is the third dolphin, we split it in half and we set up half of that tefa on one side, connected to the dofen, another half of the tefa on the other side, and we place a horizontal pole or kone on top. And that makes it considered as if it's a stima gemura, it's completely closed on the third side. That's how the halacha considers the significance of a tzura sapesa. So again, Rav is not arguing against the Chachamim that we had it back on Dafavam and Beis that you only need a Tefach for the third Dauphin. But he's explaining what that Tefach is. And he's saying that when the Chachamim said that you need nothing more than a third Tefach, what they meant is that you set up that Tefach in a way that it creates a Tzuras HaPesach. Tefach here, Chatsi Tefach here, and a horizontal pole on top. No, no. Tzusa Pesach means that when you have something that's structured in that way, the halacha considers it as a machit. It's like a full fledged machit. We don't need love. Don't need love. Even if there's airspace. Plenty of airspace, but it doesn't matter. There's no love. Ika Diamri. Now we have a second version of Rava. Amar Rava. Bini Teres Nami B'Tzusa Pesach. What Rav is saying in the second Lishna is that you have a choice. You can either set up a tefach sochek and attach it to any dolphin you wish. Or, says Rav, you have another option. Instead of a tefach sochek, set up a chatzit tefach here, chatzit tefach there, and set yourself up with a tzura sapesa. In that sense, Rava is now a maker. He's coming to be more lenient, offering us an alternative for that tefa. But he's not removing and arguing against the first tefa. And therefore, Rava in the first Lishna is more machmer because he says it's not enough to set up just a tefa as a third dolphin. You need it to a In the second Lishna of Rava, there are two options. Now we get to the third Lishna of Rava. Ika Diamri, others say, Amar Rava, Utsricha Nami. Rava requires two things. He requires a tefach and he requires a Tzuras HaPesach. And this is the most machmir of all three versions of Rava. And how do we pass you? 
of Ashi, Ashi Taylor of Kahana, of Ashi Banner of Kahana, the Ka Ovid Tefa Sohek, Vika Ovid Sura Sapesa. He had a full Tefa Sohek attached to the third dope, as a, as a third dope, and attached to one of the other two defilements. And in addition, he put up a Tzura Sapesa. Omar Lay, so Ravashi asks Rav Kahana, Lo Sover Malo Hadu Rava. Do you not agree with the statement of Rav, the Omar Rava, Viniteres Nami, Bitsuras Apesa, which, if you recall, was the middle second Lishna of Rava, and Rava gave two options. Why are you doing both? Why are you being so careful and so machmir that you require a tefach, which is what we call the tefach sochek, and on top of that, you require tzusa pesa. Um, lay, sort of kind of response, I know ki'idof lishna de rava sfirulei, I accepted the third lishna of rava, ti yom ha-rava tzricha nami, emphasize the word nami, tzusa pesa. It's not enough to have a third dofen, which is a tefach. On top, to boot, I require Eight Surah Sapes. And again, just mentioning the Svasemis, as, as I indicated earlier, this is all a requirement that Rabbanon, because Rabbanon wanted to look really as if you have a third dofa. Otherwise, it looks like it's parvus. Now the Gemara goes back to the Brisa that we quoted earlier. Shtayim kil chasam and shlishu safilu tefa. Omar rava v'chein l'shavus. Just like on Sukkot, a third dofen can be set up by one tefah. So too, that dofen of a tefah, that serving as the third dofen of a sukkah, can function as a mechitz on Shabbos. So we're talking now about Shabbos Cholomoid, or if Yom falls on Shabbos, on that Shabbos of Sukkot, we can apply a principle, says Rabbah, called Says the Brisa, interpreted by Rava, Migu. What is Migu? Migu da have you dofen linyin sukkah, have you dofen linyin Shabbos. This is a very famous principle in the Seth the Sukkah. And that is that once the Torah recognized something in the laws of Sukkah and you've created a Sukkah as a Machitza, then it serves as a Machitza even for Shabbos. So now let's go. A Rachus Hayachid. For Shabbos requires three mechitzos. A mechitzo of a tefach is not a mechitzo. And we'll see later on why, because it has to do with a halacha called parutz merubah la'omen. It's too wide open to serve as a mechitzo in Shabbos. However, now it's Shabbos and Sukkot. We used to always talk about Shabbos Chanak, but now we're talking about Shabbos and Sukkot. And on Shabbos, right, we're going to read Kohelet, right? So on Shabbos of Sukkot, or it could be Cholavoyed Sukkot, but it's uh, Shabbos. It doesn't have to be Yantif, it could be Cholavoyed, right? So that's why I said we read Kohelet. And now he sets up his Sukkah with a third Dauphin of one Tefah, which would not be a Mechitz in Shabbos. And now he introduces a picture called Migu. The Torah does not split Rashi says that <clears throat> Yeso, well, this is the Ran, Yeso did Migushi Efshal and Mechitza, Shetatir Lechatsoya, Shele Ini Dover Echa Techosh and Mechitza, Le Ini Dover Acher Lo Techosh and Mechitza. You can't tell me, says Rabba, that it's called the Mechitza as far as Sukkah is concerned, but it's not, it doesn't qualify Katsu to Mechitza as far as Shabbos is concerned. Once the Torah recognized Midin Hechsha Sukkah, that this tefa is considered a machitza. Therefore, ipso facto, it's considered a machitza as far as Shabbos is concerned. But both sides, this has tremendous repercussions. It means that if I'm carrying something in my house, which is Rosh Yochid, I've got a sukkah and a Shabbos. That sukkah is out in a Rosh Hashanah It has only two machitzas and a tefa. I'm allowed to carry on Shabbos of sukkahs from my house into the sukkah which on a regular Shabbos, if it wasn't Sukkot, would be a violation of Meleches Hotzah Doraisa, because you don't have a Rishasayot. You don't have a third Mechit. Again, it's Machlokas, Shri Rabbi Yudin Chachomim, in the Seth to Shabbos, about how many Mechitzas you need for Rishasayot. But we're going to Chachom that require three Mechitzas. 
And all three mechitzos have to create a hekef mechitzo, and a tefach does not create a hekef mechitzo. Eisve Abaye, Abaye is the following question to Rabu, Li Amrina Migu, I'm going to prove to you from a brysa that we don't accept Migu. Dofen Sukkah, Kidofen Shabbos, any mechitzo that the Chachomim said that it works as far as Shabbos is concerned, then you're allowed to use it and it qualifies as a dofen for sukkah. For example, we have what's called a mechitza of shasi below arev and arev below shasi. What does that mean? Shasi is vertical. You can set up on Shabbos. Second. Right. On Shabbos, you can set up what's called kanim. Kanim are vertical reeds or poles. And vertical means shasi. That has something to do with weaving, but that's not for us. Anyway, once you have a complete machita that's made up of vertical poles, now keep in mind that each one of these poles has to be situated less than three tefachim from the pole on the left and on the right. So again, you hopefully have a picture there. If not, I'll show you my picture. And you've got a machitz on Chavez that's made up of these kanim. Or alternatively, you can have a machitz of arev. Arev means that it goes Horizontal. horizontally. So you can set up within three tefachim of the ground, one set of wires and then another 2.9 tefachim of airspace, another set of wires, another set of wires, until you get to the height of 10 tefachim. And that's considered a machitz as far as Shabbos is concerned. As long as there's no airspace between each one of these kanim, these poles, of three tefachim. If it's less than three tefachim, then we're going to apply the principle of lavud, or modern Hebrew lavud. Okay. Now, once these mechitzos have the status of mechitzos linear Shabbos, then ipso facto, they now serve as mechitzos besukis. They go on mechitzos shall chesi, below arev, shall se mechitzai dey konim ha'omdim, smukim zelazeh, pachos mishal shetvachim, Okay, now this is the key point here. Maybe I didn't emphasize that, sorry. And that is that each one of these reeds has a thickness of one etzma. It's not a tefa. We need four etzmas for a tefa. So as far as the laws of sukkah is concerned, this could not be a kosher dolphin for sukkah. And in Shabbos, you can make all four mechitos out of Chesi or out of Arev. Then the Raisa continues and says, not only were they Matir on Shabbos and therefore Matir on Sukkah, but Yesera Shabbos on Sukkah, but Shabbos is more Chomor. It has a Chumrah above and beyond Sukkah. A Shabbos, Eno Niteres Ela Beomed Meruba Al Haparos. Masha Enkein. So in the case of Shabbos, in order to set up a Rishus HaYochid, to allow you to carry inside the Rishus HaYochid, or from a Rishus HaRabbid, you'd be chayav if you brought it into Rishus HaYochid, you need, you require Omed Merubah Laparts, which means that it should be more closed than open. Rochav ha so you have more mechitza than you have pirza. Pirza means open space. Masha enkein besukkah. Sukkah has a, has a hechsher of two defanos and a third dofen, which is only a tefa. Now, what does that mean? It means that sukkah is kosher even in the case of paritz merubal why does the Gemara assume so? The two defanos that you have have windows, presumably. They have some sort of opening. And those windows make it porous. Now, you only have two mechitos, two defanos, plus a third tefa. 
if you calculate all the periods of the two defanos, then it certainly would be more than a tefas worth. So you have a case of parutz meruva al haome. And the Gemara is telling us that as far as Shabbos is concerned, and again, let's assume it's Shabbos in the middle of Sukkot, we're going to be machmir more on Shabbos than we are on Sukkot. And why is that so? That even though the Defanos are Parutz, Merubal Omei, they don't have Omei, Merubal Parutz. And therefore, as far as Hesher Sukkah is concerned, what we're going to say is that these Defanos of Sukkah will be Ksherah. Are you allowed to carry there? No, you're not allowed to carry there. And Shabbos in, in the middle of Sukkot. Why? Because on Shabbos, we said that we need Omeg Merubala parts so that your Sukkah, which is two Tefanos plus a Tefach, is Parut Merubala Omeg, and it is valid for Sukkot, but it's not valid for Shabbos. You would not be allowed to carry inside your Sukkah. So Rav, so Abai says, my love, you say Shabbos in Sukkah, Sukkah. The law I'm reading on Migu. So this price therefore contradicts Rav's principle of Migu. Why says law? That's not what the price has in mind. Yesera, Shabbos the Alma, Al Shabbos the Sukkah. We're more machmer on a general Shabbos the whole year round. And we disqualify a mechitz if it's Paris Merubala Omeg. We must require Omeg Merubala Paris. And that's a humor of Shabbos vis a vis, meaning in comparison to. Sukkot, because in Sukkot, even though you have parts Merubala Omen, as long as you have two Defanos and a Tefa, the Sukkah is Ksheira. But if you ask me the question, what about a case on Shabbos of Sukkot, and you have a Sukkah that's parts Merubala Omen, then it would be considered Rishul Sayyachim. Why? Because of Migu. Ihachi asks Abaye, if that be the case, then listening, Nami, the Bryces should have also added the following. Yesera sukkah the alma, a sukkah the Shabbos. That in terms of the laws of Hechshir sukkah, as far as the regular weekday of sukkahs, there is a chumrah that doesn't apply to Shabbos. So, in other words, if you've already established that this price has as its agenda the comparison between sukkah and Shabbos the alma, why don't we compare Shabbos to sukkah the alma? And what's the luck of Sukkah the Alma? We have a Chumrah of Sukkah the Alma. What's that Chumrah? The Ilu Sukkah the Alma boy Tefach Sofen. The third Dauphin, in order to be qualified as a Dauphin, has to be a minimum of a width of a Tefach Sofen. The Ilu Sukkah the Shabbos. But because of Shabbos, when Sukkah over, over, uh, overlaps with Shabbos, Lo boy Tefach Sofen Vesagi Belechi. What is a lechi? A lechi is the following. Let's say you have two, two mechitzas and you set up a third mechitza as a lechi. What's a lechi? A lechi is a very thin vertical pole and it doesn't have the thickness of a tefah because as far as the width of a lechi is concerned, to set up another machitz of Shabbos, it could be a culture. Any size is, is fine. The atu di amrit, sichak al gabi mavu, sheyesh lo lechi, Rabbi himself said that if you put schach on top of a mavu, which only has two defines one against the other, if it has a lechi in the third dolphin, then it's kosher. Why? Because since a lechi is considered a mechitza as far as Shabbos is concerned. Therefore, on Sukkot, when it's Shabbos, that lechi will serve as a third dolphin. So therefore, I don't understand, says Abai, but why didn't this b'risa point out that there's a difference between a sukkah the whole year round and a sukkah on Shabbos, a whole year round meaning on a weekday, and a sukkah on Shabbos in the case of a lechi. Because a sukkah on a weekday, a lechi would not serve to be machshah the sukkah, but that same sukkah becomes kosher on Shabbos. 
And why didn't uh, why did the Brisa mention it? So apparently, the Brisa is not willing to accept migu. Now we're not going to say that since it's Shabbos, it's considered a mechitza. Therefore, it's a factor. It's a mechitza as far as Suk is concerned. So Gemara answers, "Hi, he low itzrichle." The Brisa didn't feel that compelled to mention that at all. Why? Because we have a al kalvachomer. We can logically derive hashda mikil to lechamir to we're going to apply the principle of Migu to go from a Kal case to a Chamer case. Like, let's say, for example, if we're talking about a case where you have a Dauphin as far as Sukkah is concerned, which means a third Dauphin of a Tefa, and we're saying that it has the din of a Mechitza on, on Shabbos of Sukkah, and therefore it becomes, we should say, Yochan, and you're allowed to carry inside. So you're going to kilta or lechamir to sukkis relative to Shabbos is called kilta because sukkis is only a mitzvah say where Shabbos if you violate chas from the Shabbos you have skila is therefore lechamir to kilta or kolchkin it goes without saying that if on Shabbos a lechi is considered like a dofen even though it's less than a nefach then once it's Shabbos of sukkis then for sure that lechi could serve as a mechitza as far as Sukkot is concerned. And therefore, there was no need for the Brisa to mention this. It was understood. May a level.